Welcome back. Worries over the coronavirus have caused a stock market sell-off with the Dow Industrials and the S&P 500 down about 12 percent just in the last five trading sessions. About two trillion dollars in lost market value. Former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon called that weeks ago on this program. He said he expected to see a slower economy and a market disruption. He joins me right now. Steve Bannon is the host of the wildly successful War Room Pandemic. You had that pandemic series on before anybody was talking about this. This Six, concerned. seven, eight weeks ago. You, you, you saw this coming. You talked about this on this program. First, your reaction to what you heard from Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Marco Rubio about China. I think you had some breaking news here about China, particularly from Vice President Pence. Number one, the CDC actually has gone. Looks like hopefully they went to Wuhan. They've gone to China as part of it. Looks like the WHO team. They looked at some raw data. In addition, and I think this is very powerful because I kind of fall more into the, the super hawk category with Senator Rubio. The president is continuing continuing to push President Xi for more data and more transparency, and that needs to be done here. Remember, one of the most powerful things President Trump has done, in addition to the bold action early on, is to say nothing is inevitable. He's kind of reached back to FDR and says, what we have, what we have, to, fe we have, what we have to fear is fear itself. Okay, and we need to get all the information out there and take bold action. Remember, he shut down uh, travel, yes, you know, did. from China back in late January. And Joe Biden said, "This is nativist. This is xenophobe. Just a typical kind of identity politics attack." When President Trump bought us time and also stopped potentially the inflow of other people that were infected. Yeah. That's why we're in the shape we're in today. That we can actually get our hands around this and start to get the local authorities up to speed with this task force he's got. That Mike Pence, who's a steady pair of hands, is on top. So I think this is all about bold action. Remember, Nancy Pelosi attacked him. Trump doesn't know anything. And President Trump comes back and says, hey, we got to stop the partisan nonsense. We have to rise above this. This is a national challenge. This is why the United States is the indispensable nation. We have the economy, we have the expertise, and we have the will. And President Trump, I think, is showing that. And I think in Pence's interview, you saw the nuggets down there that people like Ruby and ourself would naturally say, hey, this everything the CCP says is a lie. They spin everything. There's a story out today. They suppress this. They probably lost two months. They probably lost all of December, right. most of January suppressing it. But President Trump looks like he's forcing Xi to get more accurate information out there. And, and we talked about this weeks ago when I said, look, they sent the largest delegation ever to Davos in January. They went to sign the phase one trade deal at the White House, shaking everybody's hands. They knew coronavirus was happening. What about the impact to the economy? Because President Trump right now has to show real leadership, and he has. He was courageous in saying no more flights to China uh, as he got criticized. What is he going to do now as we see businesses pulling back? Three banks last week said, look, we're not going to have any earnings growth at all in 2020. And look at the market, $2 trillion in market value lost. Let's bifurcate this for a second. So we have this pandemic, we have a pandemic about a virus, right? That's clearly has a disruption in the economy, travel, hotels, all that uncertainty. Components, parts, shortages. Well, th th then you have a deeper thing. That's the contagion coming out of China for the about globalization and making China not just the manufacturer of the world, but the railhead of the logistics system. That's the deeper issue. That's where President Trump has been ahead of this. Remember, his whole campaign's built around moving the supply chain back. People forget the central part of NAFTA was to make North America and Mexico a geostrategic alternative for manufacturing supply base. Now, here's what we've got in front of us. You have immediate problems like the pharmaceuticals, the generics, the, pharma, you know, the APIs. You also have the mask and the consumables and medical. You, but then you have the deeper thing. That's why China's trying to get up, you know, the Apple, you know, Foxconn trying to get their production up. They're trying to force people back. To these factories, he's because, sending people back to work, even though they're still dying. In well, China. listen, you saw Let's the back to the you the saw factories. the numbers. You saw the numbers, and this is why it's going to take leadership of President Trump in the United States. You saw the numbers coming out of China on Friday were horrific. They were 36 percent, I think, for their manufacturing, and that's probably a promoted number. If you look at the actual logistics, if you look at rail stock going around and coal, you've seen the atmosphere's cleared up. There's literally nothing going on in manufacturing. President Trump is dealing with that. That I think is also where the market the market sell off is. But remember, his entire thesis is to bring the supply chain back to the industrial democracies. That's the entire thesis of his trade from yeah. day one. I think you're seeing him take bold action. He's continuing to take bold action. And that's, what's, that's what leadership's about. I'll tell you, the president has changed the conversation around China. Now you're looking at companies wondering if they could trust China anymore. 
What does this mean for China and their plans for 2030 and their plans to take over the U.S. in terms of being number one? We know right now that while ships were supposed to be coming to America to, to distribute gloves and masks, the Chinese government told those ships, turn around, we need them, we're not going we're, we're to keep these contracts that we had with American companies. This is the central part of Trump's economic thesis. The China price comes at a huge cost. Right? You've had this globalization project always looked at essentially slave labor in China, making the absolute lowest cost of production and shipped throughout the world. And you had one belt, one road. You've had, you know, made in China 2025. You've had Huawei, the whole Huawei situation. President Trump has said, hey, the industrial democracies have to bring the supply chain back. And all the Wall Street cheerleaders, you didn't see them cheering last week. Because no. now we understand that not, not just national security, but health security is inextricably linked with having this logistics chain in the middle of China. And that is what people are going to start looking at right now. That's why I think, quite frankly, on the health care side with Pence, it, I think it's terrific. you got the vice president in charge of this with Secretary Azar, with Fauci. I do think you need to bifurcate that and you need to have an economic task force because these issues, not just the short term on the supply chain for the medical, but what you know, Peter Navarro and Larry Kudlow and yeah. others are working on, the deeper issues about supply chain coming back. I think an economic task force that would be looked at that, Colin to the healthcare to say, what are we doing here on supply chain? How are we going to bring it back to the industrial democracies, particularly North America? Especially since you got Senator Cotton saying, we don't even know how this originated. The only level four super lab in China is in Wuhan. He's questioning okay. how it originated. For, for, for President, for, uh, for, uh, Real quick, Senator, for, Senator, for Senator Cotton saying that, you're now a conspiracy theorist. You know, the mainstream media and the far left saying, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. All he's saying, and this gets back to what Penn said, it's incumbent upon the Chinese Communist Party and President Xi yeah. to come out and give all information. It's incumbent upon, not. and this is what Cotton's saying, it's incumbent upon them to let the CDC down to Wuhan, to let them go to this P4 lab, to get all the information out. I think you're seeing in the subtext of what Pence was saying, yeah. the conversations Trump's having with Xi is to force more transparency. All right, so this is changing geopolitics. Let me get your take on the 2020 field. You saw what happened in South Carolina. You got Super Tuesday on uh, in two days away. What's your assessment? I think it's Bernie versus the anti-Bernie movement. You know, last night you saw you saw Biden obviously had a big night. I think one of the most important things is the African American vote, which is obviously so critical to the Democratic Party, is not buying what Bernie's selling. They're not buying the socialism. They're not buying the radicalism. They're not buying the revolution. These are very practical, pragmatic people. And I think you're gonna see on Super Tuesday how that plays out. Look, Bloomberg's capital is gonna back one of the establishment alternatives, whether that's Biden or whether it's Hillary Clinton or somebody else, okay? Against Bernie. They're gonna to try to steal steal the nomination from Bernie again. And that's why I think many Bernie supporters will come to President Trump at the end of the day. There's nobody on that stage. There's nobody in the ballot uh, in South Carolina. There's nobody in the ballot on Super Tuesday that is going to defeat Donald Trump. You still think Hillary Clinton might make an appearance in this election? I think that the Democratic Party is going to look for any alternative to Bernie. If Biden can't do it with B Bloomberg's capital, obviously Bloomberg doesn't have the charisma or the presence, I think, to be commander in chief and president right now. If they, if they can't get Biden to do it, they will look otherwise. And you know, Hillary is all already out there pushing herself. And what about Michelle Obama, who you've mentioned before as well? I think if they go to the convention and they're desperate, and Bernie is way behind, seven, eight points behind Donald Trump, the Obamas and the Clintons will look for any alternative to try to defeat President Trump. Remember, their number one objective is defeat President Trump. That's why they've had so many snarky, you know, they accused suppression of information. Dr. Fauci stood up there on national TV and said, I haven't been suppressed. I've had, what we're trying to do is get accurate information yeah. out, and that's what you need right now. The Democrats will do anything to destroy Donald Trump, and that's why I think that they will come around any candidate they think that can do it. So this thing is still wide open. But here's the point. This is Trump's Churchill moment. This is, he's got to bring the country together, which he's doing. He's got to confront not just the virus, but the economic contagion that's coming out of China that Rubio talked about. He does that. You don't need to worry about 2020. All right, we will leave it there. Steve Bannon, so great to have you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brian.